welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. This is Jessica, and uh, this is a better late than never episode. Um, please introduce yourself and tell us about this amazing book. Yeah, so hi, I'm Sangu Mandana, and I'm the author of The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. Um, it is a romantic fantasy about a lonely witch who is roped into becoming a magical tutor to three witch children and find and you know sort of along the way falls in love and finds the family that she's never had before this book i i i completely describe this book to people as like a nice cup of mint chocolate tea in like a pretty <laughs> little cup that's porcelain but has like really intricate um details <laughs> in it it's so <laughs> so good it's so sweet it's refreshing and I loved it so could you uh just talk a little bit about it so the character the main character um who is like the nanny to these three witches well mm -hmm. first of all um all witches are orphans because of mm. some like curse or some some spell gone awry um could you do you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, I mean, so I <laughs> is a, I mean, it is like you said, it is a very, um, it's meant to be a warm and cozy sort of story, but that is quite a dark um, back backstory there that all witches are orphans. Um, it was a deliberate choice because um, partly because I wanted to emphasize that sense of isolation. And partly because, I mean, for plot reasons, you'll see that it is um, it is something that's often used as an excuse to keep witches apart, uh, which isn't necessarily the best thing. But yeah, it was um, <laughs> it is a bit of a dark um, history, but I think the present day is, is a lot brighter. And Mika, the main character, like her entire life has been about following these rules and staying away from other witches and you know sort of the curse in the back of her head and the book's really about her journey to understanding just how much she wants human connection and what she'll how far she'll go to to keep the family that she's found it is a found family book and that is a big um selling point here I have to say you know found family is I think really important for various reasons uh be it that you know like you either have family issues or you know you don't have a biological family that you mm -hmm. know um you know, a lot of people really do, especially nowadays, um, you know, their friends and their community is their family. And this is just a really uh, interesting story. So Mika is like an influencer, sort of, when, when she's first found by um, Ian and Ken, um, who are living in Nowhere House uh, with Jamie. They're taking care of these three girls, Terracotta, Rosetta, and um, Altramira, um, who are uh, young witches of all different races. Mm -hmm. um, they um, were kind of found by um, the um, the head of the household, who's an archaeologist. So they're all named after different archaeological digs. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Mika herself, so she had her own foster family um, under Prim. And now she's she's like an influ she's a witch influencer but like she's using that as sort of a shield for the fact that she actually is not just an influencer but she's a witch yeah exactly um so she she does say um quite early on in the book that nobody would ever think that a witch 
on the internet is an actual witch. Um, and it works for the most part, except for Ian and the rest of the family at Nowhere House who, who don't buy it, who, who see right through her and figure out what she really is. And she explains, I think, um, sort of a third of the way through the book that the reason she does it is because it was the only way she knew of to share how much she loves magic with other people because of that sort of imposed isolation. And, you know, I mean, it was, I wrote this about six months into the pandemic when I think we were all in imposed isolation. Um, and it really, it, it ultimately it is a story about humans wanting very badly to find other humans they belong with and needing that connection. And I think, you know, the pandemic and, um, that sense of not quite fitting in, all these things really played into that. So I love that. And that's actually true. Did the, did the seeds of this book actually come from that isolation in the pandemic? I think so, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I've been wanting to write a book for adults for a long time because I'd only written children's books before that. Um, but I, I was waiting for the right idea. And I love witches. I've always loved witch stories. But I don't think it's a coincidence that when I finally got that idea and it was about witches, it also happened to be about isolation <laughs> and loneliness and finding your place. No, it makes a lot of sense. And uh, so I, I want to know, what do you love about witches? Like, what is it about witch stories that that always sort of capture people um and what was really important for you in like the you know the witches in this story like I said it's like it's a pretty um diverse crowd of young mm -hmm. witches uh which is pun intended um great because you know a lot of the classic witch stories and you know like older children's and adult you know like you just you just assume that everybody's white no mm -hmm. you know there's really no um indication otherwise I know obviously like in some stories you know um when the casting choices are made much to the chagrin of a lot of people on the <laughs> internet who apparently like have issues with you know like fictional beings not being white uh complain about it but I, mm -hmm. I liked just like this found family was just from everywhere um so uh why witches and how did you decide you know where each of the girls were going to come from um who their who their um, patron was going to be who their guardians mm -hmm. were going to be and Mika herself uh, so, we, I mean, <laughs> witches, I think, um, the reason I love them so much and always have is because they just, there's just no end to the sort of witch story you can tell or find or read. Um, I mean, you know, there are the scary witch stories, there are the spooky Halloween witch stories, there are the sort of earth witch stories. And in Mika's case, she's she's a tea witch. Um and a garden witch, and a witch who likes, like, very much connected to the natural world. And I just love that there is so much scope there, that there is no, that you can't run out of a story about a witch. And I also think that it also goes back to the fact that um, witches are a really good symbol for women who are outcasts, women who are not understood, um, women of colour who don't necessarily have a place that they belong in a predominantly white country, um, disabled women. And I think that there is, that for me, I made a deliberate choice to have the cast be diverse um, because, I mean, it's, it's like you said, most of the books we read about with witches are white, um, written by white authors with all white casts and and I love a lot of those books. I mean, Practical Magic, I adore that. And it is all white people. And the movie is all white people, uh, which I also love. <laughs> but I did want to put people like me into a sort of warm, cozy, magical story, the kind I love to read, 
uh, and that I think other people of color would also enjoy. I think everybody would enjoy this book. And I think that that's what's super, super important is, yeah, you know, you have a book where many people can see themselves in this classic story and a book that mm -hmm. could just be universally loved and enjoyed. Um, you know, one of the girls, um, two of two of the girls, um, guardians are um, a gay couple. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> who adds something else to this story. <laughs> yeah. I just, I loved it. It was so, like I said, so sweet Thank and you. so magical. And I just think people are going to completely drink this book up and be left for wanting more. Oh, I mean, I, I hope so. Of course, I hope so. Um, yeah, it, it was... It was a pleasure to write. I mean, I've written, I've written a fair few books before, and they are typically a bit angstier, a bit darker. Um, and I just wanted to sort of go, like, make a dramatic left turn and <laughs> write something uh, completely different. Because it's what I needed at the time. And I think, you know, two years into a global pandemic, the world is literally on fire. Um, Things are just not great anywhere. And I think we all need just a, there's just something we can escape to, somewhere that makes us feel happy and safe again. And for me, it was this book um, and the places and the family inside it. And I hope, I mean, I hope that anyone who's looking for that finds the same thing. Would you be returning to this world ever? I would love to. I mean, I love these characters and I would absolutely love to come back to it. I don't have anything planned right now. Um, again, I want it to feel right. I want it to be the right story. Um, and my, but my next book will be very similar. I can't say much more than that yet, but I can say that, that next year, my next book will be uh, very much like this one. Excellent. So you mentioned some of the witch stories that you've liked. Uh, are there mm. any others that maybe, um, you know, those are very popular. Obviously, people know plot practical magic. Mm -hmm. um, what are some like recent ones and maybe some older ones that you think could use a little bit more um, lip service? Oh, ooh. Um, you know, it's funny that whenever anybody ever asks me like, to name a book or a favorite book I just forget every book I've ever read oh this is this is the dilemma of people who work in a library like librarian you know somebody will come up to the desk and they're like could you recommend a good book <laughs> like yeah, so, yeah um, I've read books I I've forgotten all of them here yeah. um <laughs> There are some that you might like, and then your brain, you're just like, I read constantly. Mm. Why is this just not coming up? Yeah, yeah. No, that's exactly it. Why Why is it? Where is it? Um, so I think that I can think of right now. Um, I, I think everybody knows Kiki's Delivery Service, like the, the Studio Ghibli movie but I think love, love. we we yeah actually, I mean um, who we doesn't actually, uh, showed that to my young children a few months ago and they're obsessed with it mm, it is just it is lovely and it has those it has those cozy vibes and everything um but it is also based on a book and the book is amazing so I would highly recommend that one um and I you know I don't think it matters whether you're a younger audience or an older audience that is a great book um, I also, just to sort of go completely the other end of the spectrum, I love The Witch's Heart by um, Genevieve Gornacek. And, you know, Genevieve, if I pronounced your name wrong, I'm so sorry. Um, but it is, it is darker. It is, it, there is tragedy. It is about um, uh, Loki's wife or Loki's lover, really, and the mother of three of his children um, who was seen as a witch in Norse mythology and it is an incredible book um, and I think surprisingly given that it is tragic and dark it does also have some of those cozy feels because it is very domestic it is about her life in isolation raising her three very odd children and you know much like 
again, outcasts, really. Um, people who want to belong but don't. Uh, so yes, I would recommend that as well. That's one of my favorites. Um, recently, I also finished um, From Bad to Cursed by Lana Harper. That's her. It's the second in her Thistle Grove series, I think. Um, sec- I think it's the second, but I mean, either way, I love it. It's really good. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's... that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are those are really good. Have you read this was a really interesting one for me. Um, Everyone knows your mother is a witch. No, that was interesting because that's actually based on um, Johannes Kepler's mom, um, who Mm -hmm. was accused of being a witch and was like dragged through these horrible trials. Mm. And, uh, you know, he actually rescued her from it, but like not before just you know, she was really thrown to the courts, you know, and he, yeah. he went, he came to really advocate for her. But that was really interesting. And that was an interesting story, because, you know, it is the story of a woman who's a little bit strange. And mm-hmm. really, you know, she really loves folk medicine, and she really loves her cow. And, you know, like feels, you know, a connection with at, and like people who just I don't know, like every little thing she did that was off were um, accusing her of cursing them. So Mm -hmm. that was interesting because I did not know that story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, No, I mean, I will absolutely look that up. I like, I love witch stories. Um, Ideally, the cozier, the better. (laughs) Well, yeah, that one's not so cozy. Although, you know what's very good? And I don't know if it's traditionally a witch story, although I think there is one book that deals specifically with witches. But um, when you're talking about um, older books, and it's one Mm -hmm. that I think children and adults could like, even though it's technically a children's book, the Crestomancy series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, that's also Diana Wynne Jones. I it? believe yeah. so. Who did um, Howl's Moving Castle? Yeah, yeah. which is a favorite Ghibli movie of mine. <laughs> oh yeah, mine too. Favorite book as well, but it's not about witches. So it's not about witches. No, one. but it is. It, there is. There are. Well, there is a witch in it. There's the Witch of the Waste. There is. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's not really about witches. No, it's um, not. It's not. No, but it's got. I suppose it's got it is that, about a wizard. It's got that cozy magic thing in it going for it so yes yes. anyway thank you this was delightful no Um, thank you for having me and um I think people like I said they're really going to love this book I can't wait to see what's coming out next so your next book is an adult book again yes so my next book will be out around this time next year and it is also a book for adults it is also a romantic fantasy um I mean I do think that if you like this book you will like that one I think uh, I'm trying I'm trying to think you know the last book I read that kind of just gave me this like nice feeling um was um Under the Whispering Door by TJ mm. which is actually a very different book than this but it still has like it's got a it's got like a hint of darkness in it but mostly sweetness and sort of yeah. this feeling of you know people who feel like they don't fit finding places mm-hmm. to fit and I just yeah. Yeah. So uh, keep writing. I can't wait to read your next book. Thank you. Thanks very much. (laughs) All right. So once again, this was Jessica with Syosset Libraries Turn the Page podcast. Um, And our guest today was? Sangu Mandana, author of The Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches. And we are going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.